This would be the uh, Portuguese museum here, uh, which the uh, attendant said that uh, the Germans spared because they liked the building and they used it for a, uh, what, deportation center? At the beginning it was a deportation center, but there was a problem in that there was no electricity here. So they had to move the deportation center to a different place. Oh. And if you want to buy the story that it was preserved because the Germans liked it, it's well, they the didn't man, preserve that's what, the that's, a, what the, that's what the man said, you know. Yeah, well, but it's the Portuguese synagogue. It was the made Sephardic synagogue, and for whatever reason, they basically destroyed the Ashkenazi synagogue. That's a museum now. It is. Oh, the other, the uh, Jewish museum, that was destroyed. That's now rebuilt. The one we were just in? Correct. Yeah, that's rebuilt. And part of the Jewish museum is the old great synagogue, the Ashkenazi synagogue. That's now a muse totally a museum. The synagogue we're about to enter, the Portuguese synagogue, is a still a working synagogue. It's mind-boggling how old this is. This is the Saturday market. Yeah, we just got a nectarine from the Saturday market. It's a macaron. It's, it's coffee. It's very different than the French macaron. Much sweeter. What do you think of it, Ira? Mmm. It's got kind of chocolate in there. No, it's coffee. And this is the main shopping street in the town. And this is more of the Saturday market and a charming street, people walking up and down. It's Sunday, it's day whatever, and we left this morning from Cape Town where the temperature was about 50 degrees, and we're standing here and it's about 80 degrees in Hertzberg, which is in the middle of Kruger. And that is where we came in through something called East Gate. And everything seemed to go very well until we landed. And you see all those people? Waiting for luggage. We're doing a wine tasting in Babylon Stern, a wine tasting of three. We are now drinking a Mouvedre Rosé. Very, very pale color. And the nose is not very strong. A uh, bit flower flowery and berry, maybe. I'll taste it and um, tell you. It's a famous wine, apparently. The Queen of England drank it at the 2022 flower show in the UK in Chelsea. Very, very berry flavor. Really berry flavored. They have a cherry, a cherry taste? I would say more raspberry, strawberry than ch cherry. Now I'll give it to my fellow here. And I. You want me to hold the cow? No, I got it. You have to smell it. First, you smell it. 
that's the nose. No smell. <laughs> I'm smelling it. Okay, what do you smell? Yeah. What's the nose? I smell fresh air. Keep, keep going. Well, let me fresh. taste it. Swish it around in your mouth. We're here in French Oak Cellars, yeah. and we're tasting Bellingham wine. You have this parfum in there. Yeah. Well, it's the, uh, I can't pronounce it, it's Frank Frenchroff, uh, something like that. But it's the car museum in Frenchroff. Tell me a little about the cars and the collection, okay? Okay, so, so here we had the collection of Ford. So Ford started in 1923 in South Africa. So Ford started in 1908 in the United States. That's when they built the Model T in 1908. But the actual car that they started with was the Model A in 1903. That's the very first car that was produced by Ford. So, 19, uh, 1923, and then they built here in South Africa a Model T. So, all these Fords that are standing here, the whole collection, is uh, local production, local produce here and in Africa. And what's the production in you South mean local production here in Africa? Yes. 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 That was the first car that the South African was on a vacation on that side. I, I saw that. And then he bought it for 750 But it was sold only in red. That oh. one. So, so his slogan was just, buy it in any color, but it's only, as long as it's black. Yeah. So his <laughs> wishes was like, all the cars must be black. Right. <laughs> I think right. so. But they actually have colors. <laughs> yes. When they stop making my little tea. Morning. 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 In, in Bali. Hi, people. So those are people. <laughs> <laughs> we, we are stopping here. Yeah. We are. What? What's the? What are we stopping here for? Do you know? It sort of looks like an intersection between. Yes. And. I, you can tell by the sun <laughs> that the time is now <laughs> 20 of 9. And if you can believe that, I'm already up three hours. <laughs> oh, let me walk. Heather, but there's a reason for us stopping here, isn't there? Going to the big dam that I'm going to. Oh, oh we're not talking about it. Let's catch ahead of him. Let's get ahead of him to the dam. Okay. And then he'll join us there. Become solitary. Males, they form college and they stick together, either two or three. But the female would be Will one. be alone. So. It's Monday morning, repeat, uh, and it's ten, about 10.15. Ten We've already been on a morning drive. We're at Goranga Camp. We're staying at Little Goranga. Back of me is the general swimming pool. We're staying... We, and we did succeed in finding some. We saw a lot of impala. We saw a two giraffes. They were male giraffes. We saw a three foot high or higher than that uh, termite mound. It's a wonderful white rhino, a whole family of them with many calves and mothers. Fully grown a male buffalo would weigh like um, 80 to 900 cages. The so female one, seven to eight hundred cages. You would find the ox pecas most in um, on a herbivore. There, there is no way by going to find them in a, a carnivore. They get eaten. So they clean the skin, they eat the parasite and ticks, you know. So when they land on the um, carnivore, they get eaten. But any time when they have um, a surprise, like the the cheetahs, yeah. they've surprised them. They were not aware. The young ones, they ran away. And they, they ran the whole team. They ran away. But after they come and assess, what is this? Then after that, they have to fight back. Yeah, so they, they retreat for a while and mm -hmm. come back again. And they are a day cat. They always hunt during the day. They've got a poor night vision. That's the reason I call the day cat. The rest of the other cats, including even Flint, but this one, night vision poor. So they will be active most during the day, and in the night, they just, just take it easy, and the rest, they sleep. Uh, and are they really fast? Uh, very fast. Roughly, the maximum record that it was recorded is uh, 100, or one female uh, uh, 
impala or male impala that is uh, I'll talk about the male impala is 57 kgs you would able to drag it through the throat up to the tree oh hello you have any idea how old he is yes this one is 30 and when he's not in heat it would have a different smell if he's not in the heat he won't smell Josiah will explain a family of rhinos early in the morning, early risers, and yeah. they are, Josiah said, white rhinos. Uh, the mouth of the black rhino, it's like a, it's hook, hook lip mouth. So this is wide and square lip mouth, the other one that is a black rhino. So right. that was the mistranslation. Right, I, I know It that. was written in Dutch, vit mouth, meaning uh, wide. wide mouth. Mm -hmm. Okay. And but the color is the same. The neck is different. Yes, these ones are bigger, thick neck. Obviously, the, the body will be big as well. Uh, black rhinos are smaller. So that is the ma this is the baby. Yeah, that the is. mother. And he's chasing that one. Okay. Hard to imagine how close we are to these yeah. rhinos. They're right in front of the vehicle. Uh, most of them now they're pregnant. You know, we expect to have uh, babies second week of November. So they have the rotting season, the romantic season of which is in May, the whole of May, the mating. And then I would say 95% of, of the females, they conceive. Hey giraffe. Hey giraffe. Hey giraffe. All by himself. All by himself. For a very lonely giraffe. Just standing there. Oh, there's more? There's another one there. Oh, there's another one over there, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. That's what one giraffe on the right, one giraffe yeah, on the yeah, left. He's... And Josiah explained, Josiah, there's only uh, one kind it. of giraffe here, right? Yeah. And you... It's called uh, Southern African giraffes. When they get older, they all get that uh, dark color due to sunburn. So, okay, which one is the daddy hippo? The daddy hippo is not easy to tell. But they are big, so it's not easy to distinguish between a hippo when they are in the water. Okay. I made it. Yeah, well done. We're oh. checking the hippos here, Elaine. Yeah. Oh, I see one. You got one coming over here. That looks like the daddy hippo. Yeah, it looks like. Oh no, there's there's a big, there's a big hippo. <laughs> Do they breathe underwater? Uh, no, out of water. Only out of water. Yeah. They can spend maximum five minutes underwater. Look at Impala's belly is also white. Um, from below, it highlights against the sky. So if there was a predatory fish below <laughs> another fish, you can see the white belly against the sky, it blends in. And then from the top down, its back blends in. So with these predators and things like that, their backs blend in with the grass. The lower section, if you look at grass, it's darker at the bottom. And as well, but if you do sight them, they are diurnal, they active birds. Uh, you'll find them walking on the ground, even though they can try just that they spend most of their time walking, uh, looking for food. They are carnivores, they'll eat insects. Uh, in some cases, they'll also hunt on small mammals like spiders or venomous spiders. But today, uh, they don't really have much space and they tend to be found in areas where living conditions are not really favorable. They have to compete uh, for resources. And those are one of your weakest predators that you'll get. It's another rhino here. It it's a What kind of a rhino? I don't know. Wait. It's a white hair. Is it a white rhino or a, a black rhino? I don't know. Is that, well, let's see. Maybe it'll come. It'll come. All right. Well, can anybody guess how old do you think he might be? Um, well, I'm going to go with eight months. Eight months, okay. Okay, three years. Three years, oh yeah. Pick a number, any number. So she's actually five years. I'm just going to check her out what she's doing. But you got this. I trust. Oh, yes. So, but if you look inside, you'd only find fragments of grass and uh, no other material. At your black rhinos, you'd find other stuff like pods or seeds or tree leaves as well. Yeah. Mm. 
<laughs> and produced a litre of two, one produced a litre of four, and one produced a litre of six. So it was 12 initially, uh, but one. Okay, so and the enclosure that we are in right now, we call it the rewilding enclosure whereby we would like to expose our cheetahs to wild animals through the fences, just over the other side of the fences and come up later on. Once they consumed and they satisfy themselves, they can leave the carcass uh, to other predators. And fully developed at that age, you're looking roughly at about 1.8 on females to 2.2 when fully developed. So that is that curious point that they might want to settle you. Looking at wild dogs. Yeah, well, it's a real wild dog. Females have smaller faces than the males. Very fast and agile. <coughs> You're not doing anything, no. Incredible how fish wind heal. Very camouflage. Camouflage. Uh, yeah, you could hardly see the lion yeah. in the brush there. But he's just sitting there. You can see the Jeep. We're very close. Really close. There's a whole pride of lions in front of us. Babies. We learn trekking through. It's like an instinct to us. We have goats, cattle. We start by following the cattle at home, birds, and then finally we have a school, an academic trekking school that you can at least um, uh, upgrade yourself to uh, what Norman did. Yeah, tracking the animals. Uh, well, and which, and, which is and we have a, a sunset in back of you here. I don't know if you can see that. Oh, it's isn't that magnificent? That's right. Good morning again, net and take. Here we are in Savvy Sands, looking, watching the hyenas, having a wonderful breakfast. So, Trevor, do you think it was a lion who killed? Definitely him? lion. It was two large males, and then there was two lionesses as well. So. Trevor believes, knows that there was a lion who prepared the breakfast for the hyenas. It was, there was, um, it was a big old uh, male past prime and they caught him here. And it was two very large male lions that caught him, two big males that are territorial males from the Southern Territory, well, Eastern Southern Territory, sorry, Western Southern Territory. And then um, uh, it was the first time I'd seen them either. So they were new to the area, and that lioness that was roaring by the lodge there this morning will get killed. They need to be active within their territory. If they're not active within their territory, then they will lose the breeding right, obviously, but then also a new male will come in and then kill the cubs. So that's what his role is with regards to parenting. He is so good. Yeah. Mm, it's a good vintage. It's sinal cleansing. And the vultures will just hang out, waiting for their Yeah, the vultures turn. will just wait. It's um, two different species. That hyena and that vulture there is very close together. This is a white-backed vulture, and then you see the little guys with the red faces. Those are hooded vultures. There they are, waiting. So close to this leopard, who is right now just a few feet from us. Holes in his ear, you see that? His left hand ear. Yeah. Yeah, why so? Oh, and probably from fighting each other or... You see an elephant you know? She can suck out of that grass. Mm -hmm. Look at that. Yeah, yeah, they flick it like that to get rid of all the dirt. Oh. They don't want to wear their teeth on because the limiting factor to an elephant's lifespan is sets of teeth. So everyone says six sets of teeth in their life, which is nonsense. There's actually seven sets if you count them with the milk teeth as well. So they knock the sand off because they don't want to shorten their life by chewing on sand and wearing, wearing them down. So they're, as I say, limiting factors, six sets of adult teeth in their life. And then once they're on their last set of teeth, they actually end up starving to death. That's what kills an elephant. And is there still elephant poaching? No, test? not really. Uh, elephants have actually been removed from the endangered species list now. Here are the elephants, a family of elephants that just had a drink of water and you see the reflection in the water that they have just 
use to quench their thirst. And he, there's the African sun setting in the distance. Mm -hmm. There's one, two, <laughs> three. It's a family? Yeah, it is. It's a family? Yeah. Who's in the lead there? Uh, the is that the mom? The dad? Yeah, the, 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 the dad. Yeah. That's the dad. Yeah. Will you? Uh, the little bird that the mom, the dad, the dad, that's the dad. We were returning uh, to that small airport for our flight to Johannesburg when we had a detour from the main road and go through some small communities. And this was because residents had blocked the main road. It seems that whenever the African government allotted funds, to small communities for purposes of paving their roads through their town. The town mayor would appropriate the money for his private use. He'd be buying cars and fixing up in his and his relatives' homes. So blocking the road from airport traffic, emergency, and fire vehicles was an attempt to rebel against this corruption and attract national attention to its existence.